Yeah, thank you, Yoni. Um, as, uh, as Yoni said, um, my name is James Isbell, and I lead the BizOps and Analytics team here at Mux. I've been here for about two years building up the stack. Um, Karen's been with us for about a year. I'll let you introduce yourself before we jump in. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Reyes, and I'm a BizOps manager at Mux. I joined last year, and I'm super excited to be here today. Terrific. With that, um, I have to start with a with a sh short context and plug for Mux. Um, so, what is Mux? What like what do we do over here? Um, Mux is a Mux provides a series of APIs that let you encode, deliver playback, and monitor video in your applications with a few lines of code. As I mentioned, we've been building up the data function here for two years with um, with a, a number of other amazing colleagues. And we're excited to tell you about uh, what we've been building out, uh, our stack, and, and how we're approaching data and getting that into our stakeholders' um, hands downstream. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about a concept that I like to call data showers. And we're going to talk about why those matter. We're going to hit on what the components of a successful data shower are. And then Karen is going to help walk us through what those data showers are kind of in practice, practically on, on the ground. Uh, and as Yoni mentioned, we'll leave time for Q&A at the end. All right, so what if I told you that your data lake doesn't matter? Of course, that's a little bit flippant. Um, you might tell me to go jump in a lake. Um, and what, I, what I'd actually say in response is that it doesn't matter in and of itself, right? The data lake isn't here just um, to exist like a reservoir of water upstream. What really matters is that we use that data. So what I, what I like to say is like building a data warehouse, like a perfect data warehouse, if we're not distributing it, or using the analytics um, downstream for different stakeholders, that's vanity. That's just analytics vanity. We're just building it for the sake of it. What I'd say instead is like, just like a pizza or a joke, if we don't nail the delivery of that data downstream, it, it's all for nothing. So why do we build data lakes? We do that really to use the data to drive strategy and to power operations. And the best way to actually serve our users is what we call a data shower, right? This data lake, all this water heading downstream. Um, and forgive the extended, extended metaphor here. All right, that's that's um, me taking a data shower this morning. So what it, what is a data shower? So this is how we actually bring data to our users. We have to remind ourselves that the people don't, you know, swim in lakes every day. They they take showers, and I, I think the same is true for data that we, we need to be stop being so lake centric and think about that distribution. So just like a real shower, a data shower is the result of kind of all the work that we do upstream from cleaning, piping, metering, and heating. And then we distribute that to every kind of corner of the company where we can. But I'd say it's just like a real shower, we should shower hopefully at least once a day. And um, unlike a real shower though, um, it's you know folks like me, the analytics team, the biz ops team that are, that are in the shower, they're turning on the faucet. So hopefully that's not the case um, otherwise. To, to have a good data shower, um, again, with this extended metaphor, um, we need three components. And the first is it, it is starting with that data lake. We need clean data. We don't, we don't want a data swamp. Um, everyone here, I think, is familiar with the expression garbage in, garbage out. And that's true here. We, we need reliable, clean data to start with. So you know, is the water clean? The next piece that we really need to, to have a nice, warm data shower is a deep understanding of our customer pain points and problem statements. You can think of this as like, what temperature should the water be? What time should they take a shower? Is it you know after they go to the gym in the morning or is it before before bed? Does their hair stick up? And so they need to you know, take a shower before they go to work in the morning. Um, we need to really understand our customers, meet them where they are in order to, um, to, to drive value for them and give them what they need. The last piece is, is tooling, and that's what we'll be talking about um, a fair amount today, is that we need the right kind of tooling to help translate and distribute um, the raw data from the data leak uh, actually downstream, hopefully meeting customers where they are. Um, and so this is like, you don't want to take a shower in your on your couch or in the front lawn. Um, we need to get it to you actually like in your bathroom, like in your shower. And, and the same is true from, from a data perspective. So I'm going to touch on each of these pieces, the, the data lake, the deep understanding and tooling um, relatively quickly. Um, but hopefully this will paint a little bit of a picture about how we think holistically about getting data into people's hands. So the data lake, starting with clean and accessible water. Um, I'm not going to pretend to like tell everybody here how to build a good data lake in just like a five minute slide. But for our baiting purposes, what I'll say is that we need a few things. We need coverage um, to make sure that we have the data sets that we care about. We need reliability. 
we need to make sure that data is right. And we need, you know, somewhat latent data. We need fresh data in order to give people the right data at the right time. I'll, I'll stress that there are, there are whole like, you know, um, lines of work, analytics engineering and data engineering, like entire disciplines dedicated to this. Um, so I'm gonna just assume that you, everyone here on this call has like figured this much out. And we're gonna move on to what I think is the more interesting and like nuanced part of the puzzle, which is building business understanding. What I call this is the right data, the right time and the right place. So what I like to say um, is that building business understanding starts with one very small but incredibly powerful operating principle that we take with us on, on a kind of all of our work. And that principle is that teams like ours, biz ops and analytics teams, engage best at the problem level, not at the analysis level. I'll say that again. We engage best at the problem level, not at the analysis level. Doing that often starts with the uh, question why, actually. So when your stakeholder asks you about like, what were car sales in Tuscaloosa last month? I'm guessing they probably actually don't care about the answer to that question. They likely have a deeper question that they're trying to get at. And your job as the, as the analyst is to get to the question behind the question. Again, we can get there by asking why more. We can get there by embedding with our stakeholder teams as closely as possible. We can join team meetings, like join their Slack channels study their OKRs and ultimately try to walk in their shoes for a while. So when we start with this mindset, it really helps us build common understanding and like really understand our, our stakeholders' problems, workflows, like hopes, fears, and dreams. And when we, when we start to think this way as an analytics team, it'll really help us drive, um, you know, the, drive the right insights for the customers at the right time. If we start with the why, and we talk about um, building deep understanding with this engaging at the problem level, then I actually say the path ends with this, this next kind of operating principle or concept that, that we call computational kindness. Like this is one of my favorite quotes um, that I've ever read from um, a book called Al Algorithms to, to Live By. And, and it's how I try to approach our like day-to-day -day work with, with our teams. So the, the, the concept is that we don't just pick problems for ourselves, we often, pick problems when we pose questions to other folks or, or even post solutions. We can be computationally kind by, by ma making the answer, like telling the answer to our stakeholder and cutting out as much computation on their side as possible. For, for data showers, what does this mean? This generally means meeting stakeholders where they are. Like you don't want to have to have your stakeholder remember to open a Looker or Tableau dashboard at 9 a.m. every morning. Um, they wanna be engaging with data Kind of where they're used to engaging their normal workflows. It, it also means telling, telling the users the answer, like without making them think. If often we have to say, hey, like go to this dashboard and look at this chart before and then glean the insight from it, then, then we've already failed because um, we're making our stakeholders do a whole uh, an extra round of computation that's just not efficient for the business. And then lastly, we should remove other hurdles from taking action. So this is like automating workflows. Like we can actually even avoid surfacing insights if we're automating something um, ahead of time. And we should recognize that um, doing this right like, takes work. It puts the computational burden on the analyst and biz ops team instead of the stakeholder, but it's really worth it. I think it was um, Mark Twain that once said that I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. And that's the case here. Our goal is to write a short letter. It's harder, uh, but if we can do the bring the clarity and the computation there, then it really drives uh, business understanding. The last thing I'll say is remember, like execs shouldn't go looking for answers in dashboards. If you're sending your CEO um, a link to a dashboard, again, I think that you've already failed. Our job is to tell them the answer and get out of the way. So with that said, the, the last piece of that puzzle was tooling. Um, and let's talk a little bit about like the modern data shower stack. So this is our ecosystem at Mux that we built over the last few years where we have Fivetran and Airflow kind of piping data into Snowflake generally, DBT managing kind of transformations, Metaplane for observability, and then downstream a few other tools um, that we use for business intelligence, Looker, um, Rupert for distribution engagement. Um, if you're on this call, then I think you are likely familiar with Ru what Rupert is. Um, high touch, our reverse ETL tool, and then um, hex for data science. But what I'll, what, I'll, what I'll remind you is that this view is just for us. Like this is for the biz ops and analytics people. It's not for customers. They don't care about DBT. They don't care about Metaplane. Um, they don't, you know, they don't care about um, 
like, you know, that we run high touch and we do all this stuff really well in the data warehouse. What they care about is getting their answers um, and doing their work as efficiently as possible. So the, the, I think the, the more important view is, is one that looks like this. This is what I'm calling like our modern data shower stack at Mux, where you can see this last line of tools that we have is actually enabling distribution in a number of channels. So first off, we use high touch um, for reverse ETL and that lets us push data directly into HubSpot and Salesforce in order to power operational workflows and also like inform strategic decisions on a, on a regular basis. We also um, use Hex and can embed reporting directly into, um, into Notion where like our actual PMs and teams work. And so we can post experimentation results like live in a, in a PRD or, or in a follow-up doc and make sure that we're not taking our users out of the environment that they're working in to, to find an answer. And then lastly, um, and you know, most importantly, where we'll focus for the rest, the rest of this conversation is that we use Rupert really to distribute a lot of the insights and, and look ML modeling that we've done behind the scenes to push it natively, um, in, like push insights natively into Slack, both to power strategic and operational workflows. So with that, this is our, our kind of framework for a data shower. I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Karen, um, who's gonna walk us through some of the, like on the ground, the how that we've implemented Rupert, what that actually looks like practically within some of our workflows to drive business decisions. All right, Karen, um, off to you. Thanks, James. So as he mentioned, I'm going to switch gears a bit and talk about how I leverage the Mux data shower and tools like Rupert as a BizOps manager. By nature of my role, I care a lot about my company's revenue and cost performance. And although I'm not that person who's closing deals or writing code, I'm still able to have an impact on our top and bottom line. So during this webinar, I'm gonna focus on two different ways the BizOps function can use the data shower to create impact. The first is performance management. At Mux, we connect data from our dashboards and databases to our core communication channels to bring the right amount of visibility to the right people at the right time, all in a very automated way. And this allows us to identify what parts of our strategy are working, what might not be working, and what potentially needs to change in the moments that matter. The second point here is around operational workflows. Specifically, we inject data into different workflows to inform actions and processes that could impact revenue and costs. All of this is pretty high level now, so I'm gonna spend the next couple of slides going over what this looks like in practice, starting with performance management. So when I joined Mux, I helped set up a Slack channel for our executive leadership across different go-to-market functions like sales, marketing, and partnerships. This Slack channel became a place for me to share pre-reads for meetings, highlight big wins or concerns, and also make different asks to different leaders. I would also bubble up takeaways from our data in a pretty manual way where I'd pull from Snowflake, analyze it in a Google Sheet, and then drop it in Slack very ad hoc whenever I got questions. And what we've recently shifted to is an automated real-time update that's pushed through Rupert. We're essentially taking pipeline and revenue data from Salesforce and moving it into Slack so our go-to-market leaders can track progress against our quarterly targets. And I went from aggregating this data myself and sharing it ad hoc to now having Rupert push it three times per week. And these updates are more timely, which means we can make asks, adjustments, and take action also in a more timely way. There are very obvious benefits to me from this. This push removes a very tactical exercise from my plate. I get fewer ad hoc questions from leaders. It also allows me to focus on other things. But more than that, it holds our leaders accountable against our shared goals. Our CEO is constantly looking at these updates and asking follow-up questions to our head of sales, or head of marketing, which basically removes me as the middleman. It also allows us to celebrate any big wins when big deals come through the pipeline or course correct when we see slower volume pipe gen or smaller deal sizes. So what I've done is stitch together some actual examples of the types of conversations that have been happening in Slack. And I've highlighted the benefit we see across different functions and leaders. To set the stage in this example, we at Mux have been rigorously tracking our pipe gen and received a Rupert notification about a massive deal that significantly closes the gap against our goal. In this example, our RevOps lead is the first person to call attention to the deal. He's able to provide visibility into the large spike in data and make adjustments in Salesforce to improve data hygiene. 
In this example, he believes the AE is being a little overly optimistic with the forecast and is having the AE bring the deal size down a couple million. So here, RevOps is able to provide important context and then click directly into the opportunity to make adjustments when necessary. You jump to the next slide. From a BizOps perspective, we're able to make direct asks to leaders. This is a direct quote I've actually lifted from James in our Slack thread, and it reads, precision on forecast volumes aside, given magnitude of deal, can we get more exec or founder involvement here? And this was met with a response and action from our sales managers, which we love to see from the offside. From a sales perspective, our head of sales is able to share deal updates and also current challenges. So if you jump to the next slide, in this example, the prospect is running a tight RFP process and we're in the dark when it comes to who they're considering and why they want to replace their existing vendor. All of these details would better inform how we approach the RFP and our COO is actually able to step into the conversation and identify where the executive team can maybe help. So here he asks the head of sales to send the management team a note asking if anyone can do a quick LinkedIn scan for connections. And he also asks the head of sales to follow up with him and the CEO separately to see if there's any in we have through our investors. So all of this is pretty tactical, but you can see how everyone is operating all hands on deck when an exceptionally large deal comes through this rupert update. And it's happening in a Slack channel where all key stakeholders are represented in a very natural low lift way. I would consider this computationally kind because we are meeting our stakeholders where they already are. And that's one flavor of performance management that we have at Mux. There are other Rupert use cases that I'm excited to share with you today. The next one touches on operational workflows. The Rupert team actually has a new feature that allows you to link specific call to actions when you share different data and insights. Most of our Rupert reporting used to link out to specific Salesforce or Looker views, but what we can do now is link to suggested actions coming from the data. And there are actual buttons that your stakeholders can click to go to these specific actions. In the screenshot we have here, Rupert is highlighting an account that's been identified as a turn risk due to dropping engagement, increasing technical issues, lower NPS, and also no activity. As biz ops and analytics teams, we can get ahead of this by recommending actions like setting up a calendar invite with your point of contact on the client side to learn more, or linking to a Salesforce review account and offer discounts, or even just exploring more data in Looker um, that helps provide context to what's happening. And in order to set these recommendations, you just need to deeply understand your stakeholder processes and workflows. And for me, I do this by joining team Slack channels, participating in team meetings, and also having recurring one-on-ones with key stakeholders. And I'd say this can be time consuming, but it definitely helps me get a better picture of what my stakeholders need and what to recommend and when. The last feature I'll quickly touch on is the alerts manager, where you're able to see impression and engagement data for every report that you set up. What this allows us to do is basically performance manage ourselves and assess what's working, what's not working, and what actions are being taken as a result of our own reporting. So for example, when there's low engagement on a report, we can go back to the drawing board to consider, are we sharing this with the right audience? Um, do we need to expand or limit that audience? Do we have the right reporting cadence set up? Also a bunch of other things. Um, this is one way for us to better understand the impact of what we do and also learn and iterate when we're not getting direct feedback from our stakeholders. This just about wraps up my section. Uh, before I go, I just wanna reinforce here, there are a lot of different things you can do with Rupert and the data shower to performance manage your teams um, and also improve different operational workflows. And there's a lot of different ways biz ops and analytics teams can drive and create impact. Thank you for your time.